Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're going to go over why I recently switched from using Nerdtree to Fern, as well as go over some of Fern's features and how it works. So the main reason I switched though between these two is speed. And if you're not familiar with either of these tools, they're both file type explorers for Vim. And uh, the TLDR is no, I don't use them really for opening files. It's mainly for moving and deleting files and you know, being able to visualize a project, which is really useful when it comes to making tutorial videos or just exploring a new code base. I actually have a video I recorded a couple of months ago about why I use Nerdtree with Vim. So if you're curious about the why, I do recommend watching that video because even though it's about Nerdtree, it totally applies to Fern as well. They share a lot of the same uh, convenience factors, I guess you could say. So what we're looking at here is Fern. And I mentioned a second ago, a second ago that the reason that I switched is mainly due to speed. So if I check out something like my blog here and I go into my posts directory, you know, there are a lot of posts here. There's about 300 of them, 296. And I have about, I don't know, a couple hundred drafts as well. So one workflow I do all the time is like I'm writing a draft, right? Like let's say it's Saturday. That's when I'm recording this video. And uh, I want to publish that on Tuesday. So when Tuesday rolls along, typically what I do is, uh, you know, I open this thing up in Vim. Uh, I start reading the draft to proofread it, make sure it's right. Then in Nerdtree, what I would have done was I would have just, you know, opened up that file in the sidebar and then I just hit a hotkey to rename it and then boom, 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 and the file is renamed. But the issue there was once you have a couple of hundred files in a directory with Nerdtree, it would take a few seconds for that rename to happen. You know, even on my machine here, which is, you know, not the best machine in the world, but it is an i5, you know, 3.2 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it would take three seconds, give or take, for it to move. And, you know... It's weird, right? It's like you want your development envir environment to be super nice. Like if I ever rename a file in a decently sized directory and it takes three seconds, even though it's not the end of the world, like it just reminds me that like, uh, like this is not a fun workflow. So that's why I switched to using Fern because with Fern, it's actually uh, instant to do that rename. Now I'm sure it's not like instant, like literally, but you know what happens within like a hundred milliseconds, you don't really notice the delay at all. And it, it kind of freaks out my brain because for years or, you know, I guess for the last year or so, I've been uh, so used to waiting three seconds for a file to move, but now it's instant. And you still do get the same benefits as using Nerdtree. For example, what we're looking at here is my dot .files repo, and I can always just uh, hide or toggle my dot .files using the H key, and we'll go over some of my mappings in a few. But, you know, let's say that I have this license file, right? And I just want to rename this file. I just hit M to move the file. And just like Nerdtree, we have on the left is the, you know, original path and on the right is a new path. But just like Nerdtree also, if I just want to move this file into a different directory, you know, I don't even need to like modify the file name itself. And I hit enter, then notice here that I have a food directory and, you know, the license file was created there. You know, that's really one of the main benefits of why I like using a tool like this, because I didn't have to make that food directory beforehand, which is very nice. And uh, so now, you know, I'll just get rid of that food directory there. And now I'll just hit D over this to delete it because I actually don't want the food directory there. But the license file is back to where it was before. So, you know, like I mentioned before, I don't really keep... Uh, a sidebar open all the time when I'm actively working with things like that, you know, it's just something I, I use when I need to, like when I want to rename a file, like if I actually, but by the way, Fern does open by default, just like NetRW would be and Nurtree as well, if you just open up a directory. But like, you know, let's say that I have this license file open, right? Like typically that, that's how I would uh, decide to open a file. Like there, I have this one xlaunch config file, you know, I just type in, you know, XAF, XLA there and FCF and uh, it finds it because look how crazy deep that directory structure is where this thing is located, right? It's like 100 directories deep. I don't want to have to go and uh, go into a sidebar like this and, and click through this like 17,000 times until I find this config file. But, you know, let's say that I were editing this config file and I actually want to like maybe rename it or something like that's a silly example because it has to be renamed this. You know, I just hit leader F and that opens up Fern and it automatically highlights the file where I'm at. And now I can choose to move it, rename it, do whatever I want. And, you know, that's just a big benefit to me. And, you know, that's why I like to use Fern and Nurtree just for like that one thing alone is quite handy. But uh, now let's go over some other cool features of Fern as well, because, you know, previously, remember a minute ago, I went over, you can just hit M over this file to move it, right? And that totally works fine. But what's really cool is, and this is a custom mapping I have set up, but it's, it's normal behavior built into Fern. 
Um, actually, let me go over something else too. So another, another advantage of using Fern is you can actually mark multiple files. So I'm hitting K over the license file and K over the readme file. And notice here in the gutter that there is a little asterisk there. And uh, these files are now marked to have something happen to them. So I can actually hit Shift M now instead of M. And you know, again, these are custom mappings. And this is really beautiful. This lets me modify the paths of this file using a Vim buffer. So like if I just wanted to do something like add a two before this path and then repeat that with a dot using just normal Vim motions there, and then I just save this, then look at that. Both of these files were just renamed and uh, you know I can just mark them again if I like, do another Shift M and it's like, oh, you know what? I'd rather just name them that instead. And this is really, really powerful because you know this is such a trivial example that I just did, but you can use some you know, Vim motions or macros or do some crazy stuff to do very complicated, you know, find and replace, like you just formatting files how you want. Like let's say you have like 600 files formatted a specific way. You can go and change that now in a Vim buffer, save it and you're done. Like I find that to be a lot better than trying to put together some crazy regex and using like the rename tool on the command line or writing some custom bash script to do it. Uh, that, that, that alone is a very nice thing. So Fern speed boosts and Fern being able to mark multiple files. But you know that, that rename in the Vim buffer is not just limited to uh, operating on multiple files, right? You can always just open this file here and do a shift M and then you know just operate on one file if you want as well. So that is very, very uh, handy. But now let me open up my VimRC file here and we'll take a look at and also hide Fern because you know I don't like to keep it around. So it is just a... Uh, plugin that you install, right? This lambda lazoo fern.fim, like it's all on GitHub if you want to check it out. But uh, let's go down to some of the interesting stuff. So if you want to have netrw, which is a built-in like file explorer type of thing with vim disabled, you have to add these lines to your vimrc file. And by the way, all of this is going to be linked in the description. I'll have a direct link to my vimrc file. So don't feel like you have to you know, pause the video and type this in. But you know, all this code here basically just disables netrw. This is not really super specific to Fern, but uh, this is how you do it. Then we have uh, a whole bunch of different settings and mappings, like these are just custom things. So the first thing I did was I disabled all the default mappings for Fern. Then I set up a custom mapping here, which is leader F, that basically opens Fern, you know, in the current directory here, uh, in drawer mode, which allows you to basically just keep it open. Um, and then it just reveals the file that you currently have open, such as this vimrc file. And if I put my dot files back in, you know, and I do leader F again, you can see like it just automatically jumps right to the vimrc file. That's the reveal. Then toggle allows me to just hit the key multiple times to have it open, close, open, close. And then you can choose like the width that you want. And then I guess this stuff just sends the action in. You know, again, this is something in their documentation. I'm not really uh, super deep into Vim scripting and there's a lot of stuff in my VimRC where it's just like, cool, man, it, it works, nice. <laughs> so this is a custom mapping just for toggling uh, the sidebar for Fern. But then in addition to that, I have all sorts of other mappings here as well. So we went over M, which is the Fern action move. And then, but there's shift M to do rename. These are like two different actions, but both related to, you know, changing the state of a file or folder. Because, you know, I, I showed an example of using it on a file, but you can also, you know, hit M over here and just uh, rename that Etsy folder to be something else. I'm going to hit control C to cancel that. But there's some other cool things too, right? I have um, this one here called new path. Now, you can technically create a file, you can technically create a directory, but when you create a new path, that's the action here, this allows you to create either a new file or a new directory depending on uh, what the last character is in the file names or the path, I guess you can say. So for example, I'm in my dot files here. Let me first hide them, uh, the dot files themselves, so we have a little bit more room here. And if I just hit that binding here, which is N, this is going to create a new path. And you can see here like a hint, you know, if it ends with a forward slash, then a directory is going to be created instead of a file. This is very similar to how NerdTree works. And actually the author of this tool, Affern, is uh, very responsive. I've, I opened up a whole bunch of issues on GitHub, like feature requests and some bug fixes. And like within hours, they were being fixed. And this is another convenience factor. Like, for example, if I wanted to create a new path in like foo, bar, baz, like, and then the file name is going to be, uh, my God, can I type, like cox.com configure something like that. I just hit enter now 
and all of those uh, dependent directories have been created along with that config file. So that's what new path allows you to do. So like if I were to do uh, the same exact thing, but I would uh, I would do like foo and like whatever, whatever, but I end it with a forward slash, you know, now it's just going to create that whatever the last thing was as a directory there. You can see SD, 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 because the foo directory already existed. But yeah, it's very, uh, very handy. So I'm gonna go and delete that foo directory because I actually don't want it. Um, but let's go over some other stuff as well, right? Hidden toggle, that's the H key, right? We can just show dot files or not. Um, you can also do an R here to reload the state of the file tree. So for example, hitting R here doesn't do anything, but if I go back to my uh, github.files directory here, right? This is the directory we're, we're looking at in the other buffer. But if I just, I don't know, touch hello or something like that, right? Make a new file outside of Vim, this is not gonna know that that hello file really exists. But if I hit R now to reload, then it just popped up down here. So this just make sure that your tree is in sync with your file system. Uh, then let's see, what else do we have here? Yep, using K just allows you to mark stuff. So I just wanna mark this, or I can hit K again, that's going to unmark it. And then also, there's a couple of things that we didn't go over here. And by the way, there's like mouse uh, options here as well, like just double clicking the file will open it. And since it's in drawer mode, it's always gonna open up uh, to the side of this. It's never gonna like replace this buffer. And I find that to be really useful uh, because you know why would I wanna open a file in like a 35 column buffer, right? It's like I almost always wanna have it open to the side. But what's really, really, really nice about Fern is let's say that, you know, sometimes if I'm recording a video tutorial or something like that, and I just wanna, sometimes I'm clicking around showing people like, oh, this you new know, file exists in this directory or whatever. So sometimes I will just hit something like, like a V and just to open up this file in a vertical split. Now I know this looks a little crazy because the font size is so big, but you know, it did open it up to the side, but you can also uh, open up things below, right? So if I wanna take this license file and just open it below, I just hit B and uh, it opened it below the active buffer that I was on previously. So I, I was in position on this buffer. So when I hit uh, uh, B on the license file there, it just opened up below it. And that's really, really, really handy. But uh, this is starting to get a little weird to read. So let me kill out this one just so we have some horizontal space. Now, what's really cool too about Fern is, and this solves a problem that NerdTree still has as well. Like, let's say that you have two different buffers open like this, and you just want to like open up this X launch file for whatever reason. So you just double click it. So the problem now becomes like, well, which buffer do you want this file to be in? Should it be in the top one or should it be in the bottom one? And it was always super confusing with NerdTree. You kind of wouldn't really know which one it would go into unless you were paying like real close attention. But Fern makes this an explicit action. You can see here that the top buffer is labeled with an A and the bottom buffer is labeled with a B. So I can just hit A on my keyboard and boom, it just opens up in the A panel. And this just makes like, if you are someone who's not using FCF and you're always using the sidebar to open files or whatever, this just makes it a whole lot easier to figure out like what is gonna happen, like, you know, the state of your editor, like how is this file gonna open? So you can see now I have like three of these open. Like if I wanted to open up this readme file, you know, now there's an ABC because there's three of them. So maybe I wanna open it up in B. So I just hit B and, and there it goes. So that's also a very nice, uh, useful feature of Fern. Let me also kill out some of these windows here and maybe we'll go over a couple of other things as well. You know, this this whole like init uh, function here was taken from their documentation, by the way. All I did was pop in some binds here and uh, I think that's pretty much it going over the basic features of Fern. Um, you know, we went over new path, like moving and renaming, toggling things, uh, marking things, opening things, uh, being able to do it, hitting like enter, for example, uh, this bind here, like if I hit enter over that, it's just gonna open it up. And uh, by the way, also, it's pretty cool. Like, this is why I love the internet. Like, I never knew Fern even existed, but uh, I happened, and, and by the way, there's two other binds here too, right? The greater than and less than binds. So if I go and, and hit, uh, well, actually, I'll do it on this one. Uh, you can just kind of go through the tree, uh, you know, as if you were just going through directories and the, the, basically the root of the tree changes based on, you know, you can hit greater than to go forward and less than to go back. You can even go outside the project that you opened. You know, that could be handy from time to time. Lastly, I really only just scratched the surface here. We've only gone over the custom binds that I have here, but Fern actually has quite a bit more to offer. For example, if you just hit the question mark over uh, the Fern sidebar, 
you'll see a list of all sorts of things that you can map and run. And uh, you know, you can just scroll down here and take a look at all these. Now, what's really cool too is uh, it has this idea of being able to execute an action. So like, let's say that you wanna access one of these actions without actually binding it, but you still wanna have somewhat easy access to it. For example, we still have this hello file here that I wanna delete. So I can actually hit the A mapping here, and on the bottom left here, notice how it says action, and I can just run the same action that uh, I have bound to delete this file, which is remove. So I can just type in remove and hit enter, and it's gonna be like, yep, I wanna confirm that, and uh, it's just like I binded it, except uh, instead of being bound, I just run the action. So I find that to be quite handy. So going back to what I was saying before about loving the internet, I actually didn't know I even wanted Fern until I happened to stumble upon a blog post. For example, there's this one guy, Blues71 here, where he writes about a whole bunch of different um, Vim plugins, and one of them was Fern. And then, uh, you know, I read this post and I immediately related to this. So he's like, you know, I like to use Nerdtree also, but it had some certain performance issues where uh, I had the same problem, but then I noticed that, oh wow, okay, so Fern's actually fast and let me try it out. So I actually went through and I took some of his bindings here and modified them to be what I like and uh, went through the documentation for Fern, made some adjustments to a few of these. Like, you know, I don't have three separate binds here. I just have the toggle one with F or et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy that I found Fern because I'm pretty much going to stick with it until the end of time or until something better rolls along. But honestly, for right now, it is solving all of my problems and I'm very happy with it. So let me know in the comments below if you're going to be switching to using Fern or if you've been using it for quite some time. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps a lot. And on that note, I will see you in the next video.